As part of this lecture, let's get an overview of Spark user defined functions. Uh, when it comes to user defined functions, they are also popularly known as UDFs. When it comes to Spark, it provides a robust set of predefined functions as part of PySpark.SQL.functions. Predefined functions means the functions which are available out of the box as part of Spark APIs. However, these uh, functions might not fulfill all our requirements. There might be few scenarios where these functions might not be enough. At times, we might have to develop custom UDFs for these scenarios. The scenarios are nothing but there might not be a function available for our requirement while applying role-level transformations. Also, we might have to use multiple functions due to which readability of the code is compromised. We might want to replace with custom function. Once we define the function, we need to make sure it is available as part of the session so that it can be used. Let's go through the details about how to create the function and also how to use it using both data frame style syntax as well as Spark SQL. All those details will be covered as part of subsequent lectures in this section or module. As part of this lecture, let's go through the details about registering Spark user-defined functions. When it comes to using user-defined functions as part of Spark, here are the steps we need to follow. First, we need to develop a function. As part of that function, we need to have required logic. In this case, we'll be using Python as a programming language and we'll be developing a function with required logic. Once the function is developed, we should be able to register the function using spark.udf.register. We typically assign it to a variable. The variable will be of type function. Once the variable is created, then it can be used as part of data frame APIs such as select, filter, etc. We will be seeing examples very soon. You will be able to understand what I am talking about here. Also, when we register the function using uh, spark.udf.register, we register with a name. That name can be used as part of select expression or as part of Spark SQL queries using spark.sql. We will be seeing examples with respect to this as well. That being said, you should be able to get the details with respect to a function called as register that is available as part of spark.udf by using help like this. You can see that it takes two mandatory arguments. The first one is name, second one is function. So this is the name which can be used as part of spark.sql or select expression. The function is the one which will actually be referring to the functions that are developed using underlying programming language. In our case, it is nothing but Python. We can also specify return type. By default, it is none. However, if you want, you can also specify the return type. So let's go through the details about using register to actually register the Python functions and we will also validate whether they can be invoked both from data frame APIs as well as select queries using spark.sql. Let's go through those details as part of subsequent lectures in this section or module. As part of this lecture, let's go through the details about using Spark UDFs as part of data frame APS. However, before using Spark UDFs as part of data frame APS, first we need to develop the Python function and also we need to register using spark.udf.register. If you review the help on spark.udf.register, it takes two mandatory arguments, then one optional argument which is nothing but return type. The mandatory arguments are nothing but the name of the function that is uh, used while developing using Python as programming language. Then the first argument is nothing but the name of the function which we are going to use as part of the Spark SQL. So the Python function, which is passed as second argument, is accessible as part of Spark SQL using the name which is passed as first argument. Also, we can assign the return value of this register to a variable. We should be able to use it to actually invoke functions using data frame APIs. So let's go through the details so that you understand what I'm talking about here. Let me scroll down. Now, let me create data frame by name df. Let's preview the data once the data frame is created. In this case, I'll be developing a function to actually extract the date in the form of yoy mmdd. Already we have a function called as date underscore format which can be leveraged to achieve it. But in this case, I'm just using the same example here to demonstrate. When it comes to Python as programming language, you should be able to develop the logic like this. In this case, I'm using lambda function. I'm not using named function. When it comes to order date, you can see that the first 10 characters have year, hyphen, month, hyphen, day. Uh, we are using D of colon 10, which will give us the first 10 characters. Then we are actually replacing hyphens with uh, uh, empty string. Then it will actually give us four digit year followed by two digit month followed by two digit day of month. As it is in the form of number, we should be able to pass it to int so that it is typecasted to number. So this is the lambda function which is being used here to define UDF. In this case, the UDF name is nothing but data underscore convert. This can be leveraged as part of Spark SQL. Now, this function called return something, that return value is assigned to DC. You can actually check the type of DC here. It is nothing but function. Using this, we should be able to invoke as part of select, group by, filter, etc. 
you can see here in this case i am using as part of select you can see the output as per the expectation so the python function which is nothing but this lambda function is now available as spark function by name dc you can see dc here it is working as per the expectations you can see the output also we should be able to leverage this as part of filter you can see i'm actually filtering based on dc of order date w equal to 2014-0101 you can actually see the output we are only seeing data related to 2014-0101 you can also use this as part of group by you can see here we are actually grouping the data by order date where the date is converted to eight digit number using the dc function you can actually review the output here uh, using group by we are able to group the data based on the uh, derived logic using this function and we are able to see the count corresponding to each of those dates this is how you should be able to use python function as spark function by registering it using spark.udf.register now we should be able to use these functions even as part of spark sql queries let's go through the details about how to use these functions as part of the spark sql queries as part of the next lecture at this time we are going through the details related to user defined functions in spark in the previous lecture we have seen how to use spark user defined functions as part of data frame apis now let's go through the details about using spark user defined functions as part of spark sql most of the logic is same as what we have seen earlier you can see that we are registering a lambda function which is nothing but a python based lambda function using this name date underscore convert can be used now as part of spark sql once this is executed if you review the logic we are actually getting the order date in the form of of four digit year followed by two digit month followed by two digit day of month we are registering this logic using this name we should be able to use this as part of spark sql also this entire logic is being assigned to dc which means dc will be of type function using this we should be able to invoke leveraging spark data frame apis that being said for now let's focus on how to use the udf as part of spark sql to use this as part of spark sql you need to keep this name in mind now we are actually creating a data frame by name df as part of select expression you should be able to invoke date underscore convert and you should be able to pass the order underscore date which actually have the date in it then it will actually apply this logic on top of it and you should be able to review the data in this manner you should be able to use not only as part of select expression like this even as part of filter you should be able to pass the conditions using sql style you can actually use this approach and you should be able to compare with a particular value and you should be able to filter as well same goes with group by however as part of group by we will not be able to pass the logic using sql style syntax you have to use the data frame column object only for that reason probably you will not be able to use this logic as part of group by when you use data frame apis however as part of spark sql queries you should be able to use this approach even as part of the group by you can actually see the usage of spark sql queries in this case i don't have examples with respect to spark sql queries let me demonstrate using some spark sql queries as well so to actually use spark sql queries first we need to make sure that df is registered as temporary view for that i can actually say df dot create or replace temp view then i have to give the name for this uh, data frame let me name it as orders however i need to run all these cells i might not have ran once the cluster is started let me click on this to run all the cells by the end of the execution we'll be having a temporary view by name orders we should be able to develop queries using orders as table name or view name now i should be able to say spark.sql the execution is already done i should be able to specify the query in triple quotes like this this will facilitate me to actually develop the query in multiple lines now i can say select o dot star comma date underscore convert then order date let me say order date as int let me provide alias like this now i should be able to say from orders i should be able to review the data by saying show like this in this case i need to provide alias to the viewer table let me say as o now it should work you can see the output here with respect to order date as int you can see the date in the form of four digit year followed by two digit month followed by two digit day now we can also use as part of uh, where clause as well as group by let me copy this let me paste here let me say where then i should be able to say date underscore convert of order date 
equal to 20 14 0 1 0 1 now i should be able to run it and i should be able to review the results the results are related to order date 2014 01 only we can also use as part of group by as we have seen earlier with respect to data frame apis in this case i just have to say date underscore convert of order underscore date as order underscore date then count of star as order underscore count now i can say group by as part of the group by i should be able to specify this logic also i can actually use one now let's run this you can see the re results here the results are as per the expectations uh, when it comes to group by uh, as part of spark sql you should be able to refer to the uh, derived columns using position like this you don't need to uh, give the complete name of the column or the derived logic like this you can directly specify the number based on the position in which you have the required logic. It will work as per the expectations. This is how we should be able to define a function register and then start using it as part of Spark SQL. As part of this lecture, let's go through the details related to another example with respect to Spark UDF. We'll be building an UDF. We'll be using that to cleanse the data. First, you will actually create the data frames. The data frames are nothing but courses underscore df, users underscore df, and course enrollments underscore df. We are actually passing pandas data frames to spark.create data frame to create the data frames uh, using spark. If you review the data, you can see that uh, some of the column values have backward slash backward slash n. They actually represent null values in the source. We got those values here. Before loading into the spark metastore tables, we might want to replace these with nulls. Also, if you closely review the datasets that are used to create these data frames, some of the column values have spaces before the actual value and after the actual value. We might want to trim these as part of the data cleansing process. So we would like to replace these with null values. And also we would like to trim unnecessary spaces before the column values and also after the column values. Let's come up with a user defined function to take care of both the transformations and we'll also see how to use it to cleanse the data from all the data frames that are created using these three cells. Now with respect to uh, function, the function definition will look like this. C dot strip will actually remove the spaces. If C dot strip is not equal to backward slash backward slash n then we would like to return c dot strip which means the strings with no spaces before and after the actual value if c dot strip is equal to backward slash backward slash n we are returning none which means it will be transformed to null when we actually use this as part of spark you can see that the function is created now the function is registered with the same name uh, this is the python function this is the registered function you don't need to assign to value you can directly use this as well because we have named function already but if you wanted to use some other name you should be able to assign it to a variable using a different name and you should be able to use that name as well as part of your data frame apis but with respect to spark sql you have to use this only that being said now you should be able to review the data with respect to course underscore df you can see that there are quite a few values with a backward slash n in them and also with leading and trailing spaces now we should be able to use this approach to actually cleanse the data you can see that now there are no leading or trailing spaces with respect to these values because they are trimmed and also with respect to backward slash n's they are actually converted to null values this is how you should be able to use data cleanse function to actually clean the data based upon the transformation rules like this you should be able to even use on top of spark sql queries in case if you would like to use on top of spark sql queries you have to first create a temporary view so let's pick this name courses underscore df now let me scroll down here in this case it have failed because uh, uh, i have not imported call let me import call let me say from pyspark.sql.functions import call now let me run this then let me run this now you can see the output as per the expectations now i have already copied courses underscore df and hence i can actually paste then say dot then create or replace temp view let me name it as courses now i can actually say spark dot sql then select course id comma data underscore cleanse this is the name of the function using which 
the data cleanse function is registered. Whatever is given here, it should go here. It is very, very important. Now, as part of the data cleanse, we should be able to pass the column name. In this case, it is nothing but course status. Let me copy this, paste here. Now, let me provide alias by saying as course underscore status. Now, I should be able to say from courses. Now, I can actually say show like this to preview the data. Now you can see the output. The output is as per the expectations. Uh, this is how you should be able to come up with uh, Spark UDFs based upon your requirements and start using it as part of your uh, data engineering pipelines. It is very, very important for you to understand the relevance of Spark UDFs and also uh, you should be able to use them wherever uh, they are required.